cut copper, baby. Oh yeah. Holy cow, another awesome full intact crota bill. Look at that. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, it's not a coin. And so this is gonna be the obverse, and it's another great bust. It's an 1865, the date's clearly readable, right there on my phone. Great seal button. It's deep, so maybe it's not crushed. It's not crushed. Holy crap. Well, hello again, everybody. John BTV Digger here. It's been a long season. Last time I joined you was back in early December of 2017, and it's been a long winter as usual up here in Vermont. Now it's the first week of April, and the snow's finally melted. I'm back out at my colonial site. I finished with your last, with the last video where I found a bunch of large scents and some great colonial relics from back uh, around 1800 or so. I was able to get out uh, about a month ago, just very briefly, with my friend Joe from Green Mountain Diggers, and we hit this very same site and found even more large scents. Um, I'll show you a shot right here. I found a beautiful 1846 uh, braided hair, uh, but we were only get, able to get out for about uh, four or five hours, and then the snow hit again. We were locked down for another uh, 30 days. So. I'm back out here again uh, to try to hit these fields and to mop up the, the leftovers. Most of the good targets, um, the easy ones at least, I've, uh, I've hit. But there's a lot of fields out here and it's a beautiful location. And I'm going to get out here and hopefully find some more good things for you. I'm looking forward to it. It's been a long, long season. Let me show you the site real quick. I'll pan the camera around and then uh, we'll get busy swinging. And I'll come back with uh, hopefully some goodies for you. So here it is. Let me come out of the car, out of the wind here. And you can see this, just a beautiful open site with an old colonial home site right on the top of this hill. I've got permission for that farm down there as well. Uh, and also these fields down here. So there's a ton of ground that I haven't even hit yet. But most of the stuff is concentrated in about a 50 by 50 yard square area right around here. So I'll kind of mosey around here and let's hopefully find some goodies. All right, I'll get back with you when I find my first things. On to the next find. Well, about 10 minutes here, my first target, I dug a dug another beer can. You're gonna get that when you're right by the road, but this is the first uh, hold target here. This is an 85 and tight signal. I thought it was gonna be a large sin, but I'll take it. Look at that greeny right there. That is a nice old buckle. And it's that design that I found before. It's a little bit of a larger variety, uh, but that's, uh, that's early. That's like 1800 or something like that. Early to mid 1800s maybe. Very nice, that's a good start to the day. All right, on to the next. Let's find some more goodies, guys. Well, I'm not going to film all of these today. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to dig another handful of these, but I want to get a few of these on tape. Uh, this was ringing up like about a 77, and uh, tight signal, and I think I got myself a nice little flat button, and I do. Uh, I have not dug a military button out of here yet, but I, I have to imagine of all the buttons that have come out of here, there's going to be one lurking somewhere. But hey, nice little early 1800s flat button. I'll take those all day long. Those are nice little relics from the early to mid-1800s. Absolutely. All right, let's go find some good stuff. On to the next. Well, it's been a while, folks. Uh, it's probably been 45 minutes since that last button. I did find one other button. I didn't get it on film because I didn't think it was going to be good, and then it popped out, and I didn't end up filming it. So I got a couple buttons. I got that nice buckle. And uh, came back here to the back part of the house. The house is right up there on the crest of this hill and kind of quiet out here. And I've had a, several really good signals that turned out just to be garbage, but I finally got a, uh, another good one and it was a solid 80 and quiet, no iron around it. And look right here, I think I got something really good. Look right there, see that? Hard scent, baby. What do we have? Maybe that's a focus one scent. Be a drape bust or what's it gonna be? Oh, it's going to be a matron. Very nice. Look at that. Actually, I can even see Liberty on her. And I can actually, there's going to be a date too. Sweet. 1830. I don't know, can you make that out? My eyes are hard. I'm trying to look at this through the camera and I can't see. I think it's 1833, matron head. Uh, later date before they went to the... Uh, to the cornet. So yeah, that's going to be really nice. A lot of detail on that. That is a sweet coin. 
you got to just keep being patient. There's more stuff out here. That's like 10 large cinch from this property over the last, uh, over this past winter and spring. Oh, it's drying out now, so it's nice. 1833, yep. All right, I'll take that all day long. Let's go find some more goodies. On to the next. Well, here we are at my next find. I think I've got a button here. It rang up like a 71. Um, it's smaller than a large sand. It looks like it's a little thin, but I'm gonna go ahead and film it and see what we got here. You never know. Um, let's wipe it off there. Yeah, there's a shank on the back there. See that? And you can see kind of how it's machined in the circle there. Um, another plain Jane. Nothing really in the front. A lot of these uh, old farmsteads, uh, the buttons. Just working man's, uh, a working man's button there out in the fields. Uh, there you go. Nice little flat button from way back, early 1800s. All right, good find, on to the next. Well, just working my way through the iron here, folks, up to my next find. About three minutes after that one button, and here's a uh, here's another button. Buried right in there, and this one's gonna have a shank on it. Um, and most of these are just uh, plain old flat buttons, but I'll take them. Um, and that one's got the full shank, so even better. All right, let's keep looking. Again, I'm not going to film all these buttons because I'm piling them up, but I want to show you a few every now and then. Uh, I'm back up where the home site is, <clears throat> right here on the crest of the hill. I'm just going really slow through the iron and just looking for, looking at the numbers and looking between the grunts of iron and seeing where a 50s or a 60s signal pops out. Maybe I'm lucky and find another coin. Uh, I'm not sure, but we'll just keep on plugging around in here. I may head across the street over there and see if there was some activity over on that side here in a little while. But we'll stick here as, for a little while longer because I'm still pulling out buttons and stuff. So let's see what we can get. On to the next. <music> folks oh boy this is the weird and the wonderful thing you love about this hobby i got a screaming like 85 signal two inches under the surface that was fairly tight and i was like you know there's enough can slow in here i've dug enough stuff that it probably is but you got to dig stuff like that at this old site and look what's popped right out underneath my shovel here look at the size of that now you remember on my last video i found one of those druid pennies heck folks this is even bigger and you know what? It's all—it's too big to be a coin, but look, there's some dude or something on there with a with a line. See that? There's like a guy standing. And let me um, let me get my large scent out, and I'll show you what the comparison of the size of these things are. <clears throat> Let's zoom in right on that. There's my matron. Look at that thing. Weird and wonderful. I'm gonna have to probably take some Brillo to that because it's just totally toasted. Maybe a medallion? I don't know. But look, there's some. There's a guy on there. With, see, there's a, like a line right there. And then there's something right there. So some huge medallion or token. Awesome. I'll get a cleaned up shot for you and see what it is. I can't make an ID in the field. I have no idea what that is. I mean, that's even bigger than a, you know one of those 1799 cartwheel pennies, which is plausible in a place like this because I found uh, some colonial stuff around here. But that is weird. All right, if it's anything good, I'll give you a cleaned up shot of it. All right, on to the next. Very strange indeed. Well, I'll come back to you in the next one. Again, I'm not filming all these buttons, but this is the best one of the day, folks. Look at that. Sweet. Tomback. Nice, smooth, metallic, gunmetal gray. That's a great find. I wish I had the full shank on there. It's partially ripped off. Man, very nice. Late 1700s to just about 1800. And that is smooth as a baby's bottom, as the Hoover boys would say. That is a really nice find. All right, let's keep digging the goodies. On to the next. All right, folks, on to my next find. This one's going to be kind of interesting. I see something round in the hole. It looks thin and large. <laughs> so let's see what we got. It rang up like an 85. It's right there. See that? But it looks look how big that looks. Let's see if I can get it out for us. 
Once again, something huge. It's not a large set. Oh, look, it's got a slot in it. Oh, you know what? It could be a railroad token. It could be a, just a cow tag, too. No, it's a railroad token. Oh, yeah, baby. And one of those old, like, um, I read online if these slots in here are rectangular, it's um, from an older, an older variety. And there's a little writing on it. Look at that. It says R and W Railroad. Is it R and W? Yeah, it's a luggage tag. R and W R R Railroad tag. I have no idea what that is. There's been there were some Rutland Railroad stuff, Rutland and Burlington, and the Rutland Railroad, but R and W I have not heard of. That's sick. That is an awesome find. I'll get that cleaned up and give you a shot, and then I'll do some have to do some little research and figure out uh, what that stood for. There's several resources online I can figure it out, especially with the writing on it. Awesome find. All right, let's go find something else, guys. On to the next. Well, here's the first for today, and I will take these every time. Small ammo, folks. Looks like I got a dropped, uh, dropped musket ball. I believe that's what it is. No, you know what that is? It's not a musket ball. It's a, uh, it's a ball button. Very nice. Looks like the, uh, the shank has been smashed in there, so it's probably just hollow inside there. These are like two-piece buttons often, and these little shanks would get smashed in. But um, you may remember I filmed one of those last time, uh, back last uh, summer up in northeastern Vermont. But I'll take it. An old ball button from probably 1840, 1850. All right, on to the next. Hey, here we are at my next find. I'll take these all day long. I've got a number of them in my collection. Look at this. About a 58 signal on the AT Pro. Nice little thimble. Uh, probably just plain with no writing on it, but you never know. Um, and that's not totally smashed. I may be able to very gently push that out and get it back close to, close to, you know, totally looking completely whole again. But yeah, I'll take that any day. Very nice thimble. I've been here about four hours now, so I've got quite a bit of relics here. I'm getting kind of tired. I may break for lunch and see what else the day brings. Um, I want to stay out here till about four o'clock and then uh, head on home because I'll start to feel tired at that point. But you know, it's hard to leave when you're at a colonial site and you're finding old stuff. So let's see if we can find a few more things before I get out of here. On to the next. All right, folks, I'm back for another find. Unreal, this place, it just keeps on producing. I'm right in the middle of the home here site, all in this iron, and you know how you better in detectors, iron will squeak and give you high tones and you go both ways and sometimes it doesn't sound good and you get that iron signal coming back off of it. But sometimes they're just good enough to say, you know what, I probably need to dig that because it's, it's just good enough that it may be something good. So I took a gamble on this one, thinking it may be just some canned slaw or some other garbage. Um, that I've dug plenty of the day along with some great relics, but you know what? This time it paid off, doggone it. Look down in here. Oh yeah, baby. I just saw the edge of it. Another largey. Holy crap. And you know, sometimes this, this site has preserved most of them pretty good. Um, this one's a little toastier. You know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take them back home and let them dry off in the, uh, under like a heat lamp and then just toothpick it off. Don't put any water on it. This one's thinner. This could be another Dre bust. I pulled three Dre bust out of here. Um, I'll come back with another shot. It's definitely thinner, so it's not going to be one of those braided hairs or late matrons. Um, it's going to be an earlier one, like a classic head or a Dre bust or maybe even a, you know, a KG or something. But I'll have to get some more detail on it. I'll get back with you if I can find something good off of that. Great find. All right, almost out of here. Just probably another half an hour. So let's see if I can pick out a few more things out of the iron. Well, more from uh, the weird and the wonderful, folks. This is a nice little item I've just found. I've already kind of pushed it off a little bit. Um, I look here in the hole, but check this out. Tell me if that's not cool doorknob or a drawer pull totally intact 
and that looks old. Look at the shape of that thing. That's way back old, man. Dark. It's brass, I have to imagine, but it's, uh, you know, stained almost black through all these years in the ground. That's a killer find. I'll take that all day long. Man, way back toward just after the colonial period. Really cool find. All right, I'm almost out of here. About five or ten more minutes and I'm gone. So I'm going to start moving back toward the car. If I find anything else, I'll let you know. But otherwise, I'll see, see you in the wrap-up. Okay, we're back inside for the green velvet wrap-up. Much warmer after spending a really nice but blustery and kind of cold afternoon up there on the hill. Let's go over some of the finds very quickly and I'll summarize a few things that I didn't describe in the field. Just a few things I did not get on tape. Um, I did get another uh, square kind of D-buckle there and a couple scraps, a rivet. Uh, looks like another part of a buckle. This is a uh, Chittenden County game, fish and game uh, bird band. A uh, little thing with a number on it. I guess I could go back and, and look and see when that was uh, issued and everything. And let's see anything else. Really, most of the other stuff I did get on tape. Um, I got a wealth of buttons here. I, I filmed a few for you, including this really nice Tomback one here. Uh, the rest of them are pretty much plain Janes. Um, there's some four-hole buttons here. I think I got, looks like 14 or 15 buttons. Uh, this one was kind of neat right here. If you can see, let me bring that in. Um, it's got like super fine or double, super fine standard wording on there. But the very bottom, it says 830 on there. And I've never seen that. It's right there. I wonder if that means it was made in 1830. No clue. I may have to look that up. Uh, I've never seen like numbers on the bottom. But there's no maker's mark. It's just a generic uh, generic maker out of London. So 15 buttons, including one at least one Tom back. I'll take that. Got my really nice colonial drawer pull. It ended up being totally hollow. I just kind of hollowed it out with a toothpick. Um, very dark stained brass. Um, item. I got my thimble. Haven't straightened this guy out yet. It's a it's an open top variety, but it also looks like it may have been not initially designed like that. It looks like maybe it was used so much that the top just broke off and they tossed it. Because that doesn't look like it was made like that. It's kind of ragged on the edge. But I'll try to straighten that out later. And it's just a generic uh, brass thimble. That was nice. And then my four other items, I've got my Matron Head 1833. She's in pretty decent shape for being in the ground for almost 200 years. These, uh, I think there were like seven uh, Newcomb varieties on these where they matched die pairs of reverse and obverse dies, but there was generally a standard standard front, um, and they're all, all generally fairly common. I think they made about three million of these. So that's those early 1830 Matrons are not that uncommon to find. I've also got uh, that unidentified copper I found in the field. It turned out to be a King George, um, but it's got a reeded edge. And the Liberty on the back, as you can see there, she's really toasted. I had to take some Brillo to it. Um, it's a smaller variety Liberty, and it rang up high on the AT Pro, like an 80. So it's not a Matchins Mills counterfeit copper. It's actually either a genuine British uh, copper or perhaps one of those Canadian tokens. I looked it up online and there's a number of them that have this type of smaller Britannia on back. And so any experts out there, give me give me your best guess. Um, it does have the reeded edge and it's very thin, but no other identifying uh, marks. There's no words I can make out. Very worn and heavily used, so probably dropped, heck, I guess in the early 1800s, even though these were made in the 1700s for the most part in the early 1800s. Uh, and then the last two items, I've got this big thing that turned out to be a medallion. You can see where it's hold on top there. There's a guy standing on some ground there with a staff and then a, a little ribbon around it. And then if you flip it over, um, it's hard to make out, but it's uh, Christ on a cross and then two figures on either side looking at him. My son and I, my teenage son and I, spent about an hour online looking last night. But you know what? You can find like a million religious medals. So if anybody sees or, or looks at this and thinks, hey, maybe that's what it is, give me a shout on YouTube. Um, it's certainly old. Nothing here other than the modern Canslaw post-dates the Civil War, for, to be honest with you. So this is, uh, this is old. This is early to mid-1800s and made out of lead or more likely lead pewter. Um, but I thought that was very interesting. And it was only like two inches deep. Very strange. And then probably my best find of the day... Oh, wow. This, look at this. Another railroad token. Fantastic. R&W Railroad. There were two R&W Railroads in Vermont back in the 18, late 1840s and 1850s. The Rutland and Washington Railroad and the Rutland and Whitehall Railroad. 
The Whitehall Railroad was a much shorter uh, line, only about six miles long. The Rutland and Washington was a larger line, and there's actually a wiki on that. So I'm going to guess that's what it was from since it was a little bit of a longer, more thoroughly used line that, that ran a bit longer through the years. This is going to be probably 1850s to about 1860. The house was on the 1857 map and was gone by 1870. So I guess you can make the case all the way up to about the Civil War, but that would be the very end of when this house was there. Uh, but killer find. I love these old railroad tags. And it doesn't have any maker's marks, so that did uh, did throw me a little bit on putting a precise date on it. It's just got this weird circle on the back. But, heck, I'll take those any day. I just take Brillo to these, and it cleans them right up uh, since they're not made out of silver or anything. It's just a brass tag. But yet another really good day at that virgin site. And I'm I'm uh, documenting all the, all the finds from this site, and someday I may end up giving it to the uh, historical museum there in town. Uh, the town I'm searching in because I've got these finds and then over here I've got all these other coppers and buttons and crotal bells. Um, some of these I found uh, back in March that I didn't get on video when I hunted with my buddy uh, Joe from Green Mountain Diggers. Uh, I got another crotal bell here so those continue to pile up in my collection but just what a wonderful sight. Tons of buttons and at least 10 or 11 large cents out of there so I'll be looking for other uh, places to search here in the coming weeks and definitely have some more videos. I've got a number of other permission sites lined up uh, in the cornfields before they start planting here in May and June. So I'll be sure and be back with you sooner than later. I appreciate you joining me on this latest uh, edition of the BTV Digger uh, channel. And happy hunting to all of you. Remember to get out there and dig it all. It's waiting for the ground for you to find.